So when you are on call and in the PACU, a consultant may ask you if you want to help out or do a peripheral nerve block for one of the post-op patients. Um, or if you're on one of your ortho rotations and the first case of the day is a regional case, you'll kind of be expected to do or at least help out with that nerve block. Um, so one of the things that was anxiety provoking for me as a CA1 with nerve blocks is just how do I set up the tray? Um, same thing with like spinals and central lines, just the setup is a process in itself. Um, so in this video, I'm gonna walk you through one way of how to set up for an ultrasound guided peripheral nerve block. You'll hear different things from different people about the order of steps or the specific needles that you use, um, like where you put your hands, when you put your gloves on, and just, just go with whatever people tell you, whoever you're working with that day. Um, but this is just one way to get you started. All right, y'all. So I'm only gonna try this once because I don't wanna waste so much stuff. But I'm going to show you how to set up a nerve block kit uh, for a single shot ultrasound guided nerve block. So what you'll need, you'll need a support tray. I've seen this the most. I also recently discovered this one, which I probably like better, but I think there are more of these. So we'll go with this one. You'll need that. You're going to need your local. Um, and this will be a discussion with your consultant as well as possibly the surgeon about what specifically you want to use. But usually we do bupivacaine or mepivacaine. You'll need epinephrine, so this is one milligram per milliliter. You'll need a needle, so it's this echogenic needle with a catheter on the end of it. Usually I do the one that's like green and it's a little bit longer, but there are more of these in the supply room, so we'll go with this. Uh, you'll need a chloroprep stick, you'll need your sterile gloves, and ultrasound pro, or ultrasound pro cover and gel. You'll have your ultrasound to the side. Um, I think that's it. So let's get started. We're gonna open this guy up. So first step is just getting stuff open. Oops, already rest up. So we'll go from this side. And then drop in your sterile stuff onto your tray. So we've got our epinephrine. your needle, and the thing that is the most difficult for me because it's huge and clunky is your ultrasound probe. Oh, there we go. All right, so as you can see, all this stuff is kind of like piled up together, and that well right there is where we need to put our local anesthetic. So this tray is kind of nice because the well is like off to the side. And so you can just open your stuff up, open this up, pour it in, good to put your gloves on and go. Um, but in this case, if I poured this in, I would, the gauze would soak it up. So have to do something different there. So what we're gonna do is put on just one sterile glove. Well, we'll open this first, put that to the side, put on one sterile glove, rearrange this, pour our local in, put on our other glove and then finish setting up. Um, so first, let's open this up. So we'll pop off this part. There's this tool on the side of your cart to open up these vials. It's super clunky and kind of annoying to work with and I've definitely trashed some vial vials trying to open it, but we'll see if I can get it this time. So that comes off there. We'll put our local to the side. So now I'm just gonna put on one glove Of course, if you have someone helping you, then you can put on both gloves and someone else can pour your local in the well. But we are strong, independent people who are doing it alone. Okay, just one glove on. So I'm gonna move some stuff aside here. Okay, so now I've freed up my well for my local. I'm gonna pour my local in. And now I'm gonna put on my other glove. Should 
should probably take your ring off and wash your hands ahead of time, which I did not do, but I'm only doing this once. All right, so got our local in there. So what we need to do here is we need to put some epinephrine in our local and we need to prepare a lidocaine syringe for our skin wheel. Um, and we'll put our local in our syringes, attach that to our needle to get the injection ready. So the order you do things in, you'll kind of figure out how you like to do it. Um, I'm just gonna kind of go at it for now. So we'll start with the epinephrine. So it's in a glass syringe. So I'm gonna use one of these pieces of gauze to open that up. And again, this is one milligram per mil. And you have a couple options to pull this up. Again, a glass syringe, so you can do a filter needle. There's also this needle, which has a filter in it, I've been told. Um, so you can do one or the other. I'll use this guy. And you're gonna pull it up into this tiny, like TB syringe, one milliliter. All you need is 0.1 milliliters of epinephrine. So this is kind of nice because if you like pour it upside down, it's not gonna pour out. So again, just 0.15. and you're gonna put all that into your well with your local. All right, so now that's ready to be drawn up into your syringes. So this kit comes with a 20 cc syringe and a 10 cc syringe. That vial had 30 milliliters in it, so we can fill up both syringes. The other kit has two, 10 cc, or two 20 cc syringes in it, but you really only need the 20 and the 10. So then you can take your needle, take off this little plastic piece. So you see there's this white cord attached to it as well. So this is for nerve stem, but we're doing this under ultrasound guidance. So I see most people just take this off because it's just one less thing dangling. All right, so then we'll attach that to one of our syringes and go ahead and prime until you see some stuff coming out there. So this is good to go. Once you're done with this, you can use up the rest of your 10 cc syringe. So that's good to go. We also need to get our lidocaine ready to numb the skin. I'm gonna take another gauze here, open this up. So I've been told you can just reuse this. It's fine if there's a like a little bit of epinephrine in the, the lidocaine that you're using just for the skin wheel. Um, that'll help with bleeding and it's such a small amount. But in this kit, you also have a filter needle. So I'm gonna use the filter needle. You'll attach that to the 3cc syringe in here. And get rid of that. Attach blue needle. All right, lidocaine's good to go. If you wanna be extra safe, you can put a label on there. Your Lido 1% for your skin wheel. All right, so we've got our syringes ready with our local and epi. We've got our Lido ready for our skin wheel. Other things in here, so we've got some drapes you can use. There's two options. You have one, which is this, the one and done, sticky drape with a small opening. If you know exactly where you're going, you can use this one. You also, this kit comes with four of these blue drapes. And when you use these, you're gonna open it up completely and pull the sticky off and, and place them one by one. So these are good if you have like a big area that you're working with. Really quick, I wanna show you what you'll need to grab if you're doing a continuous nerve block rather than a single shot. 
Um, so that's like if the patient's going home with an on-cue pump or if they're being admitted to the hospital and they're going upstairs with a nerve catheter. So it's mostly the same stuff that you'll be grabbing. You'll have your nerve block kit, ultrasound probe cover and gel, uh, chloroprep stick, sterile gloves, local anesthetic with epinephrine, and then this is the different stuff. So instead of that uh, one shot needle, you'll find something that says continuous on it. So um, I see most people use this one. And again, it comes in a shorter needle and a longer needle. Shorter needle, that'll be like for interscaling blocks. A lot of those go home with on -cue pumps. Longer needle, that would be for like an infraclav block. Um, so again, this is the one I most commonly see. There's also this other kit that some consultants like. Uh, so with this one, you have the catheter that's outside of the needle, whereas this one, the catheter is within the needle. But usually this, some people really like this. Um, and then you'll need a dressing. So most people grab this big tegaderm. I've seen some people like the smaller, like IV tegaderm. Then you also need some mastosol and dermabond. So mostly the same stuff, just a different kind of needle and then stuff to dress up the catheter. Even if you are a professional at setting up a nerve block tray, there are other things you have to think about. Um, so not only is your tray ready, but is your patient ready? So that means monitors are on and we do the full uh, pulse ox, EKG, blood pressure cuff. Do they have a working IV, a reliable IV? One, because these patients are often getting fentanyl and Versed as pre-medication just before we get started with the block. And if you're unlucky and you get in a blood vessel and you accidentally give your patient last, it's nice to have a working IV to give them intralipid and resuscitation. Um, since we're giving them pre-med with Versed and fentanyl, it's nice to have like an oxygen mask on, at least a nasal cannula. Um, you'll want to make sure that the, the patient is in a good position for the block. So like if you're doing a brachial plexus block, because their arm and shoulder and back kind of in the right spot, you want to make sure EKG leads and lines are out of the way. You also want to prep the, the skin area where you're working with some sort of cleaning solution like those the chloropreps that we use. Um, you want your ultrasound in the room oriented at a good spot to where you'll be standing. You want the patient's information plugged into the ultrasound. And you also want the actual probe within reach so that when you know, you're getting the probe covered with the gel, you can just grab the probe and, and drape the probe. Um, and then before you're actually going forward with the block, you need to do a timeout. Uh, so that's going to include uh, the patient name and MRN, what you're doing, um, which side you're on. You need everybody agrees on the side and any allergies. Um, so once your patient is ready and prepped and pre-med and draped and ultrasound and timeout and your block tray is ready, then you're good to get started. Other block things. So if it's a post-op block, you need to make sure that the patient has already given consent for the block and during their pre-op time. So before they got any anesthesia. Also, if they're on any sort of blood thinning medications, you need to know the exact date and time when they last took their blood thinner. Um, so I think most of us have bought this app at this point. It's called Azra Coads. I think it's like $4, but you can put in the whatever medication the patient's taking, what kind of block you're doing, and it'll tell you how long they should have held their medication for and when they can restart it. Um, if it's a post-op block, some of the surgical services want to do a neuro check before the patient gets blocked. And so if that's the case, you need to make sure that they've actually, they've already come to bedside and they've done that. After you do the block, you need to put in a note in the patient's chart. It's just one of your procedure notes. You also need to document what medication you gave them. Say it was like 30 cc's of quarter percent bupivacaine with epi that it's actually in their chart. Other things, um, so if they're going home with an infusion like an on-cue pump or if they're going to the floor with an infusion, um, you need to make sure that the infusion medication is actually ordered for them, so you might need to order that. So with the, with the charting and the orders, just have your senior or your consultant kind of help you out with that for the first time. So the next part involves a little bit of math. Feel free to skip it. Bottom line, 0.15 milliliters of one mg per mil epi per 30 cc's of local. When I was putting our kit together, you saw that I put 0.15 milliliters of epinephrine into that 
30 cc's of local. So why did I do that? Um, when you do that, it creates a concentration of epinephrine of 1 to 200,000. So when it's written like that, remember this side is grams and this side is milliliters. Um, so that is the same thing. One gram, that's a thousand milligrams per 200,000 milliliters. Get rid of some zeros here. And we've got one milligram, which is the same thing as a thousand micrograms per 200 milliliters. Get rid of some zeros. So 10 divided by 2, that's 5 micrograms per milliliter. So when I put that epinephrine into the 30 cc's of solution, I end up with a concentration of epinephrine that's 5 micrograms per milliliter. So why is it 0.15 milliliters exactly? So remember that vial of local is 30 milliliters. So if I want this concentration of epi in there, Let's see, 5 mics per mil. I'm going to need a total of 150 micrograms of epi to go in that 30 cc's. So 150 micrograms, that's the same thing as 0 0.15 milligrams of epinephrine. And that's what we're pulling out of this vial here. And this vial is at a concentration of... Um, one milligram per milliliter so all you need is 0.15 milliliters from this vial going into your 30 cc's of local so you don't really need to know or remember all of that math it's just good to see it once uh, just remember that when you're using 30 cc's of local you put in 0.15 milliliters of this concentrated epinephrine Really quick here, what does that percentage sign mean? Um, so to convert that to milligrams per milliliter, all you have to do is take the decimal point and move it to the right one. So this bupivacaine quarter percent is 2.5 milligrams per mil. Half percent is gonna be five mg per mil. 2%, 20. And this works with everything, so even this vial of normal saline, 0.9%, that's gonna be nine milligrams of sodium per milliliter. Um, and there's a vial of dextrose 50% in your Pixis, so 50%, that's 500 milligrams per milliliter. Um, so a really easy conversion there. So try to keep track of the tip of your needle on ultrasound. I don't know how to end a video like this. You're gonna rock that block. I'm so awkward, you guys.